You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. Thank you for joining me here today on this Training Thursday edition of the show. Looking forward to getting into some brand new research that will benefit everyone over the age of 30 years old as you begin to lose muscle mass, which means as your metabolism begins to decline each and every decade, unfortunately, for the rest of your life, unless you begin to do this. And that's what we're going to go over. So the nice thing is this, is that I will never present you with information that you have no control over, that you're not able to do anything about. And what I believe the great thing about natural health is that every single thing about your body can be worked on to work on wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging. And that includes body transformation, but don't think of your body, don't think of your muscles alone as something for vanity or how you look specifically. That's part of it. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to transform your body and look the absolute best you can for your desire, for how you believe your best body looks. And that is for only you to decide. But I'll tell you this, the way that your body carries weight It has so much more to do with just, again, vanity-based purposes. It helps you throughout life. We know that the smaller your waist-to-hip ratio, the less chance there is for cancer, type 2 diabetes, and many other health-based issues. One of the issues that we're going to talk about today is higher blood pressure. High blood pressure strokes are still part of the top three to four causes of overall mortality. That means that if you're able to not get high cholesterol or a heart attack. And again, not everyone with high cholesterol has a heart attack, that's for sure. But if you don't have high cholesterol, if your arteries are clean, if you don't have a lot of inflammation in them, and you're less prone or or you're not able and you're not going to get cancer, and you don't have high blood pressure, and you don't get type 2 diabetes because you are keeping your blood sugar regulated, you're not becoming overweight, well, then your chances for living a nice, long, healthy life go way up. And that's one of the topics for discussion today. And the truth is that it's not difficult to do this. It's actually extremely easy. The problem is always things that are easy to do are oftentimes very easy not to do. And I've chatted about this before, talked about it before on previous Mindset and Motivation Mondays, because the plan I give you today is going to take no more than a total of about 150 minutes a week. And you might say, well, that's a lot of time every single week. But honestly, it's not. Because as we break it down, it's about 30 minutes, five days a week. 30 minutes out of your entire day. So if you're up for 16 hours a day, all I need is 30 minutes of that. That's it. Now, and I don't even need it every day. I need it about five days a week. So I'm going to show you a plan that makes it even easier. Four days a week for 40 minutes. That's what I'm looking for. Four days a week, 40 minutes. Now, the question is, how do we get that 40 minutes? Well, you can go back. I have many, many other shows on how to get in this 40 minutes every single day because it can actually be broken up into two 20-minute routines. So let's start to go over that now. The reason why I wanted to bring up this specific research and this specific study is because it does apply to so many people. I mean, if you are 30 years or older, or let's say that you're in your 20s, well, I'm guaranteeing you probably know parents, grandparents that are over 30 years, right? Or if you're in the health-based industry, you're a personal trainer, you're a yoga instructor, you're someone in this industry, health coach, you need to be sharing this information. So very simple. I'm going to go over what the study said, and then I'm always going to put it in real world terms of how you can implement this in your life right away. Meaning don't wait a month. Trust me, the motivation will begin to decline. Try it tomorrow. Just set a plan for tomorrow. Let's get moving right away when we see these types of things. So this is what we found. That one specific nutritional supplement and one form of resistance exercise, resistance training, 
began to help people. And this study was people over the age 60, but we know that metabolism begins to decline by 3 to 5% per decade after the age of 30, actually 27 years old. So when we look at that, it means everybody that's trying to keep themselves from gaining body fat as they age, from having too much bone loss, which leads to falls, which leads to when someone does fall, there's more of a chance for a bone break, which means then they're more likely to go to rehab, which means there's typically more of a great decline in quality of life. And that's what we see all the time from hip fractures in people over the age of 60 or 66 years old. So what I wanted to go over right now is that nutritional supplement, how much to take, and the resistance training itself. So here's the nice thing. Again, this is a smaller study. I'm not going to say that it's not, but they actually did it well. And by that, I mean this. They broke it down into multiple categories. So let's go over it. The supplement they used was fish oil, omega-3s. Now, if you're vegan, you will want to just simply make sure that you are at a 3 to 1 ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s, that you're getting enough omega-3s from algae, from flax, from chia, from black walnuts, from things that are going to give you enough omega-3. And I did a whole podcast on that. I will try to link up that podcast today. Or I'll just embed it. I like to do that lately. My team's been really great at that. So head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1350, and I'll embed one or two shows on what is omega-3, why you should have this specific ratio, and what happens if you don't, meaning in terms of inflammation and all sorts of issues with the arteries and cardiovascular risk, which is the number one killer in the United States alone. So Let's go over this. Um, This was done out of New Mexico State University in conjunction with California State Polytech University and Florida Atlantic University. What I'm going to do is link up the uh, study here as well. So here's the interesting thing, and I'm going to go break it down for you right now. So this is over a 12-week period of time. I would love to have seen what happens in a year because I'm telling you right now, I am sure that the results would be even greater. There's no doubt about it because it's only 12 weeks. Now, 12 weeks is great, but imagine training in physical exercise, especially for those that haven't been training physically, meaning resistance-based training. And this was over 12 weeks. Again, what about 52 weeks? That would be absolutely phenomenal. I'd love to see a lot of other biomarkers too. One day, I hope to be doing a lot of these studies myself, if not consulting with them, ideally running them myself. But anyway, that's a talk for another day. So let's go over it right now. They were assigned in three groups. They had the control, which was no resistance training, and they used placebo capsules. Then they had a resistance training group who did resistance training, and they had placebo capsules. Then they had resistance training, and they had the fish oil supplementation of, and keep this in mind because I'm going to go over it, 2,100 milligrams of EPA and 720 milligrams of DHA. Okay, really important. Keep that in mind because as I've told you on previous shows, most people recommend more DHA than EPA. I used to do the same about 15 years ago. Now I'll tell you after a decade of running omega-3 tests, people need higher dosage EPA than DHA. And whoever was running the study obviously knew that, um, or they just got lucky because most omega-3 fish oil products do not contain more EPA than DHA. You have to work hard to find one that is higher EPA than DHA. I will link one up that matches exactly with the study today. I'll do that at stephencabral.com forward slash 1350 will be all of today's show notes and links. So, what they did was they assessed hand grip strength. This is actually impr- uh, extremely important. A lot of people don't know that hand grip strength correlates with aging. The weaker your grip, the more you are aging. Now, maybe that would seem obvious, but I don't think so. Because if you maintain good hand grip strength, it's actually a great barometer, like it's a great gauge for blood pressure. It's a great gauge for nervous system-based strength. So, I can't recommend that enough. You can just get a simple hand gripper and you can see how strong your grip is and work to improve that over the course of 12 weeks like they did in the study. And you don't have to use a hand gripper to improve grip strength. You can simply hold on to weights doing a lat pull down, doing a deadlift, doing any type of motion that has you holding on to something to keep yourself engaged in that exercise. Again, a pull-up would be a great one. You could do assisted pull-up or you could do assisted chin-up. So those are all great ways to do that. Now, 
I'll go over the workouts in just a moment. They assessed overall physical function, day-to-day tasks. They went over a six-minute walk time. Again, these are people, I think average age was 66 years old. And um, they also did a 30-second sit-to-stand. And so that's basically sitting down, standing back up, sitting down, standing back up. Really important when you are 66 years old. Now you might say at 30, oh, no big deal. I can sit down, stand up. Okay, how many times can you do that in 30 seconds? You can still see an improvement in that. And we, I call it a squat to stand, but it's a simple way to teach people how to squat properly by sitting back on their glutes and actually waking up those muscles rather than pushing towards their knees and putting more pressure on the joints. So after all that, they also assessed blood pressure, okay? Beginning of the study, end of the study, assessing blood pressure. Blood pressure is the systolic over diastolic. The top number, we want that at 120 or less. I don't like it really less than 105. So 105 to 120 for your systolic. And then your diastolic is the bottom number. Again, I've gone over what this means on a previous show. I won't go over that too in depth for the people that want the macro overview. And the diastolic, you want between 75 or 70 and 80, we'll say, for the diastolic. Uh, We certainly don't want the systolic above 130, definitely not over 135. And we don't want the diastolic, the bottom number, over 85. So it's a great way to assess blood pressure. Blood pressure should be done seated. It should be done with your left arm. It should be done with your left arm below your heart. Very simple. Wait for yourself to sit down for five minutes. Assess your blood pressure. Now, again, there's different ways to do blood pressure. I've done standing blood pressure. I've done lying blood pressure. I've done from a a lying position to a standing position to see if there is a drop, like a tilt table test. I used to do physical examinations all the time in my practice. I don't use that as part of my practice anymore. Now we teach people how to do it, and they can do it anytime they want on their own. Okay, great study. Looked at some really good parameters of what to assess, and they looked at the amount of muscle mass and the decline or not over those 12 weeks. And they found that obviously people doing resistance training, not obvious, but improved. Now, here's the thing. They found this, that across the board, the control group didn't do so well, right? They're the control group. They did nothing. They just stayed the same. Then they have the control, but you know they're taking the placebo. Then they have the resistance training, who did a little bit better, but no fish oil. Then they have the resistance training plus the fish oil who did the best. Now, that isn't necessarily obvious because it wasn't obvious that resistance training would help those over 66. But of course, we do know that because again, I've talked about it before. One of the people that I looked up to when I was I was getting into this industry, I was 22 years old doing this full time, was Dr. Wayne Westcott. And he worked right down the road about well, about 20 miles or so down the road in Quincy, Massachusetts. He worked at the YMCA studying seniors and doing just twice a week resistance training. Even just doing machines, they improved in muscle mass and overall quality of life. So I knew that from a very young age. Okay, at least twice a week resistance training, even just machines, even just for two sets, improved the quality of life in seniors. And I, I went over that book in the past, but that was Dr. Wayne Westcott, and that was his study with the resistance training. Pretty amazing. So I knew that, but what I wasn't sure of was using fish oil. Interesting to look at that. They call it a therapeutic intervention for improving the muscular and vascular function. Now, here's the thing. We know that fish oil is a natural blood thinner, but we also know that it is a natural anti-inflammatory for balancing healthy levels of inflammation in the body. So not only can it help with muscular-based function, we know that it helps with vascular function. So I'll tell you right now, this is a great study. I have no doubt that it will be done for a longer period of time in the future now that we know this was successful, and it will be done with an even larger group of people. So here's the thing, though. Here's the results from the report. After age 30, as much as 3 to 5% of muscle can be lost per decade. Now, I'm going to interject here. 3 to 5% might not seem like that much, but over five years, losing 25% of your muscle is enormous. I mean, think about that. You are going to be weaker. You can have less endurance. You're going to have less stamina. You're going to have less mitochondria, okay? So you're not going to be able to produce as much energy. You're going to be weaker. There's no doubt about it. But also, you're going to start to add body fat at a much faster rate. And that's because a 25% loss in muscle mass doesn't enable you to burn as many calories per day. I mean, this is extremely important. So again, one more reason, and we'll go over what to do in just a second. So the results in weaker and less mobile seniors who are more likely to fracture a bone if they fall. That's why this is so important. A 2015 report from the American Society for Bone and Mineral Research found that people with sarcopenia, which is muscle loss, had two to three times the risk of having a low trauma fracture from a fall such as a broken hip, 
collarbone, leg, arm, or wrist. Furthermore, a broken bone from a fall could lead to prolonged recovery time. As reduced muscle mass increases, so could seniors' physical independence, thus negatively impacting their quality of life. All right. So this was in the uh, journal Sports. The study was called Chronic Fischial Consumption with Resistance Training Improves Grip Strength, Physical Function, and Blood Pressure in Community-Dwelling Older Adults. So it's funny there, chronic fish oil consumption. Chronic, in this case, is actually a good thing. It's so funny that they keep calling it chronic, though. Chronic just means ongoing. In this case, it's ongoing fish oil use. Now, again, it's a good thing in this study, but very interesting that they would label it that. Okay, so now what does all this mean? Let's get down to the crux of it. Why does this and how does this impact you? All right, here's what we want to look at. Two to three times a week of resistance training. That means a full body workout, chest, back, legs. That's the front of the legs, back of the legs. Okay, that means push and pull base exercises and push pull base exercises for the upper body. Ideally, a little bit of core work. But what these compound movements are doing, like a chest press or shoulder press, like a row or pull down, like a squat, deadlift, lunge, or step up, all of these things create resistance and tension on the body. That means they create tension on your muscles and on your bones. So again, you can look up at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. This was episode 1350. Every week, essentially, when I don't do a Toxic Thursday, there's a Training Thursday episode. It gives you free workouts. I give you all sorts of uh, information on what compound exercises are, like the ones I just named. Those are the ones that you want to do. Too many people, though, go into the gym and do a bicep curl. They do a tricep press down. They do some crunches. All of that's fine, but that's the icing on the cake. That is the 5% or 10% you do at the end of a workout. That is not the majority. That is not the lion's share of what your workout should be. It should be your presses and pulls, your squats, deadlifts, lunges, and step-ups. And if you can't squat because your knees hurt, check out my podcast on how to squat. You will not have the knee pain. So that's what I want you to look at. Now, let's make this even easier. Two to three times a week. I'm suggesting three, okay? Ideally, I'd love you to do four. But I'm suggesting three because that's what the research pans out to be the best. So a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right? Monday, Wednesday, Friday would be phenomenal. That would be what you're looking to do. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday is also okay, all right? So I'm going to give you the minimum, all right? Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, what would I love you to do? Here's the best. 20 minutes of resistance training. It's not a lot. I'm not a machine person. I don't think that you should run through a gym and do all the machines. I think it forces your body in a specific range of motion that most people biomechanically, meaning like their posture's not in the right alignment, they're not in the right alignment, they shouldn't be arching their back, forcing themselves into a machine. Now, cables doesn't count, okay? That's not a machine. That's still allowing you a free motion. So what I recommend is 20 minutes of resistance training. It could be your own body weight. That is resistance. But eventually, you're going to want to do some weights or bands or kettlebells or sandbags or barbells or anything with weight, okay? Because you want to push past your typical 8 to 12 to 15 reps for most people. Again, can you do five reps? Absolutely. There's a time and place for every rep range. Five sets of five? Absolutely. But if we're talking about your average person who is not an exercise expert, you want to do somewhere between 8 and 15 repetitions. That's perfectly safe. I have a book called A Man's Guide to Muscle and Strength. You're welcome to do any one of those workouts, specifically starting with Starter Workout 1 and Starter Workout 2. It's available at equilibriumnutrition.com. It's available on amazon.com. I might make a dollar from selling that book. That's it. But it is a lot of my best workouts that I wrote before 2010, and they're still valid today. They're compound movements. So, Here's the thing, though. Keep it simple. You can just do even two sets for now. Okay, I'm giving you the simple version that's going to get you the benefits from the study. 20 minutes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Leave a day between each workout. Again, I'm giving you the simple version and because this works. So start here. Don't start at the most complicated. Get more complicated after this. And if this is for your clients, give them this plan. After you're done with your 20 minutes of your workout, your resistance training, you can keep it super simple, right? Keep it super simple. I did a circuit. I just gave you a circuit uh, about three weeks ago of what to do. And then after that, do 20 minutes of cardio. So that's it. 
We have 20 minutes of resistance, 20 minutes of cardio. So now you get the cardiovascular benefits. First, you get the anaerobic benefits. Then you get the aerobic benefits. There are benefits to both, okay? So you could do some intervals at the end, or you could do just regular cardio and aerobic exercise. Both will be fine. That's okay. Now, that will also count towards your 10,000 steps, which is every day of the week, not just three days of the week, okay? So now we're getting the benefits three days of the week with 10,000 steps a day. Now, you might say 10,000 steps is too much. I agree. If you're doing 3,500 steps a day, 10,000 is too much. Go to 4,500 steps next week. That's it. And don't go beyond that till you've mastered 4,500 steps. Remember, there's no rush. There's no rush for either one of us. Let's progress through this with where you're at right now. You don't need to be at where anybody else is at, right? I'm at a specific level. Someone else is at a specific level. Another person's at their level. We're all different, and that's great. All you want to do is work up to what I'm talking about today, but most people can start right where I'm talking about today. Three days a week. Don't overdo it the first few weeks getting into it. Now, what if you could move to one more day a week? That would be the gold standard right there, right? Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday is basically my gold standard for most people. And the reason is that most people have their cheat meal on a Saturday. So if you can work out the same day as you have your big cheat meal, that's going to better enable you to keep your blood pressure, inflammation, and blood sugar balanced with that exercise, that workout, because you're going to be depleting glucose. So you have to refill those stores in the first place. Plus your body will use that as part of the recovery process. So really, really nice. Now, onto the fish oil. What is the fish oil? The fish oil was very specific in the study. You can't just pop a couple random omega-3s and say, oh, I'm good. No, no, no. Go by what the study says. The study was very specific. 2,100 milligrams of EPA per day and 720 milligrams of DHA per day. Let me repeat that. 2,100 milligrams of EPA, 720 milligrams of DHA. Now, the nice thing is most fish oils contain both EPA and DHA. Now, the problem is that most are two or three to one of DHA towards EPA, meaning they're higher in DHA when they should be higher in EPA. And again, I've done thousands of studies in this. And so that's why I can assure you that it's not me, it's the clinical research that is saying use more EPA than DHA. That's what most people are short in. Plus, EPA can be converted over to DHA if your body needs it. It's really, really nice. So here's the amazing thing. I don't come up with things out of the blue. I just want you to know that. I go by the research. I match it up against what Ayurvedic medicine says, what the seven forms that we use as an integrative health practitioner use. And I say, does this make sense? And that's what I go by. And that's why a decade ago, I started using double the EPA. It's actually, it's more than double the EPA to DHA. And that's that's exactly what we do. So our current EPA is 1,986 milligrams of EPA for two capsules. And it's 500 milligrams of the DHA. Now, that's for two, okay? So that's the dosage that we find that most people need to reach a three to one on their omega-3 test. And if you've never run an omega-3 test, it is by far and away the most overlooked lab in the world. It really is. Like it's because it's so easy to get data from. It's people say, oh, no, no, you know, I'm good on omega-6 as well. You never really know until you run the lab. I thought I was good eating a healthy diet. I'm eating fish a couple times a week. I'm not eating a lot of high omega-6 meats. I don't eat a lot of omega-6 nuts. I don't eat a lot of like cooked oils. And I was a six. I was just right around there, six to one. Now, the average American's an 18 to one. So I guess I was doing better than the average American, but I wasn't a three to one. And the reason was this. It was I was not getting enough EPA. My arachidonic acid was low, which is good, but I didn't have enough EPA. So here's the thing. I started taking two soft gels. Very simply, I got it to a it's 2 point whatever, 2.7 to 1 ratio, which is great. And that's what most people get to. Now, if you wanted to be right where the study is, you could do three of the soft gels. And three of the soft gels would take you to right around 2,000 milligrams of EPA. And it would take you to exactly 750 milligrams of DHA, right where the study was. And our new soft gel is going to be just slightly higher. It's going to be just over 2,000 milligrams of the EPA. 
and it will be at uh, for 800 milligrams now of the DHA for three capsules. So if you want to do three capsules, you're welcome to. Again, we find for most people, two is enough. And then if you're using a liquid, which I do more and more often now because I'm just doing less capsules, is that it is one and a half teaspoons to get you the same dosage or a half a tablespoon, all right? So again, three soft gels or one and a half teaspoons will get you what it had in the study. If you want to do what I do in terms of a daily protocol, it's the daily foundational protocol, I use two soft gels or one teaspoon. Really easy. I believe it's enough. Um, it certainly is clinical basis based on lab testing, but it doesn't match up with the study. So if you want a little bit more to match up with the study, that's okay too. I don't think it's too high a dose of fish oil. Remember, not a high dose nutritional supplement kind of person. I believe in a good standard dosage to make sure you're meeting all of your needs. And again, lab testing tells you if you're meeting those needs. So I'll link up the omega-3 test here. I'll link up the omega-3 soft gels that are in the right ratio. I will link up the omega-3 liquid and uh, I will link up the studies. I hope that helps today. I'm telling you right now, this is not difficult. This is easy, but we just have to carve out the time. That's it. 20 minutes of resistance training, 20 minutes of cardio three times a week will be enough. Ideally, get one more day a week if you can. Really recommend that. But if you can do three Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, you're still good. You really are. And then take your daily fish oil. I recommend it as part of daily foundational protocol level two or level three. That's what I do every single day. That's what the majority of the people do in our practice. And it makes sure that you're meeting all of your nutritional requirements on a daily basis. Thank you so much for tuning into the Cabral Concept. As always, if this was helpful, please do feel free to pass this information along to anyone else you believe it could serve. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.